find my name a little difficult to pronounce. So I see I always simmer, I never boil. And, and, uh, so that is something which is very important for us. That can you keep your temper under control? Hello. So that is the first thing with which I am starting off. I have a slideshow here. How many of you would like to just have an interactive session? And how many would like to actually make me go through the slideshow? <laughs> <laughs> interactive? Both. Sure, both? <laughs> okay. So uh, how we go about it is that I just speak for two, three minutes. And then I'll open the platform for as many questions as we can handle. And we'll ensure that we don't ask questions which have been asked before or have been partially covered. So that way we'll be able to cover a lot of stuff. I'll just give a quick brief about uh, myself. I was born in 1965, and my age is 25 years. Uh, I started my first startup in 1985 at the age of 20, which folded up in 1986. And in 1988, I started another startup as a joint venture with a friend who was uh, working which folded up after eight years in 1996. <coughs> in 1996, I went back to a job. And then I collected some money again and left in 1998 <coughs> to again start Compare Info Base Limited. So I'm still keeping my job in Compare Info Base Limited. But as an entrepreneur, I'm very clear. The day I need to go again, I'll carry any visiting card and look for a job, make money and come back and be an entrepreneur again. Uh -huh. You see, for every 500 people who come up with an idea, 499 of us, thank you so much, 499 of us struggle. One actually makes it very big, which keeps the other 499 going. That is the basic, basic, basic thing about entrepreneurship. So what is the whole thing about it is, I work on one line. Determine and the victory shall be yours. So whatever, howsoever long it takes, that's what we have to look into. The first line which we have written here is what I'll all explain about this slide, and rest we can brush up later. Or it can be transferred over to all those who want it. What we say is that if when does a person perform his best? When he's in love. All of you, and including me, who have pursued or uh, a person in chase <coughs> for love and have actually gone ahead and found a girlfriend and worked on it, they know how hard it is <laughs> and how best you do when you actually are in love. So what is an entrepreneur I feel is that if you are not in love, you are not going to succeed. You have to bring love up to the forefront and do it. You see, you always work. There is, there is a very stupid example, very stupid example which I give. You see, that stupid example is, a lot of people come back and say that they challenge Darwin's theory also and they say. This example goes like this, that how did man happen to be man? It is just because that there is a huge difference that between man and woman, the affinity was such that a woman was always available to a man whenever he wanted. And this man would go, use his hands, bring fruit, and get to the woman. The more woman was available, the more the man would go and get fruit. The more upper limbs would come to use. Very interesting theory. I heard it in a conference in Silicon Valley. And from then I tell it every time. The more the front arms would be used, the more he'd do it. Slowly the front arms became free. Slowly he started walking. This is a counter theory to Darwin's theory. That it is the love between man and woman, the Adam and Eve, which actually got to the level where the whole thing started moving ahead. So what we say here is that if you are in Ishq, if you are in love, you can really do it. How we define Ishq and how I personally define Ishq is, E for me stands for entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is all about taking a risk, taking your chances, doing hard talk, taking hard decisions, taking decisions, good, bad, ugly, irrespective of that. S for me stands for speed. If it can be done today, the first thing which I ask myself and which I always ask myself is, what was stopping me in doing it yesterday? Why I didn't think of doing it yesterday? What was there which actually 
stopped me so that whatever I come up, can I come a day before? Can this idea, can this thought, can this execution could have been done a day before? That is the speed. The next point which I ask myself is, what is the window? What is the frame? Is it a six inch by six inch frame which you are looking into? What is your horizon? Is it 12 inch by 12 inch? Or you are looking from 30,000 feet? Or you are perpetually sitting on the moon and looking down on earth? What are you doing? That is something which you have to look into. Are you just looking into the window which is very, very narrow for you? And very narrow, very myopic vision? Or are you open to everything? Are you willing to go back and ask for the feedback? And actually go into the community? This particular part of me comes from a little story, uh, again, in, this, in my background. We are two brothers. My mother, uh, she passed away four years back. Uh, she used to say that my youngest son and my eldest son are very wicked. My youngest son would do anything. But if he'll ask, he'll always consider the feedback. <coughs> so, for instance, if I had to chase a girl, I'd never go and ask her. That look, I'm thinking of going and following that girl and knowing what are her timings for going to a cafeteria to eat a dosa. So I'll not ask her. But if I go and ask her anything, then I'll consider her opinion. <coughs> Whereas my elder brother was very clear. He'll always ask her and decide on his own. So my point has been here is that for me my horizon is and the focus which I bring in is that if I have to take a call, if I have to take a decision, if I have to consider someone, I should be very clear, I am going over to someone and asking for an opinion whether I will be implementing it or I am just asking for the heck of it. If I am closed, as an entrepreneur it is very important for you, if you are close to and you have already made up your mind, don't go and seek another opinion. If you know you need to do it, don't ask anyone. <coughs> Believe in yourself. But if you seriously feel that the other person can add value to you, go ahead and ask him. The cue which I say in love is quality. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are doing, whenever you are doing, there has to be a quality component built into it all the time. You cannot come back and say that, okay, it's called lipstick powder lavadi. As we say. No. You basically have to be presentable at every stage, at every level. You cannot come back for... What I say is, an organization, the best organization in the world, would be that organization which does not have a quality department. Quality department in an organization actually means that that organization has huge amount of errors and quality <laughs> flaws which are built into the process management. And there is a need for a person to do it. If you actually work on your focus and you lay down the foundation, that the quality control itself becomes redundant. Nothing like that. For those, our thoughts have to be taken and other steps have to be done. With this, I open to the floor, ask me as many questions and I'm all around, but I would like to know your name and one line background so that I can relate the question with you as a person. Please. <coughs>